Hi, I'm Tim, and this is a Dikendo Developers Podcast. We're going to be talking about Emacs today. Um, I've used Emacs for about two years. I find it's a really strong, extensible editor um, that's great for editing text, and it does exactly what you need at any given time. If you find it doesn't do what you like, you can change it. But today we're just going to be talking about using it to do simple editing tasks like writing code, searching, moving around, and all the basics that you do day to day. Um, so let's jump right into that. So here's Emacs. Uh, if you don't have it already, um, you can download it. It's on the web at um, gnu.org slash software slash Emacs. Uh, if you're on Ubuntu, uh, some sort of Debian or Linux system, um, there's a package for it. You can install it. Um, we're not going to talk about that. If you're on OS X, um, you can download their installer and launch it automatically. Okay. So let's say you jump. So this is the first thing you'll see in Emacs. Uh, this is the welcome screen. Um, and there are links you can click on here with your mouse, but I recommend not using your mouse for the next 10 minutes. Just throw your mouse away. Um, the arrow keys work exactly as you'd expect. Um, and let's just hit the down arrow key to Emacs tutorial, and on that line hit enter. Um, we're here in the Emacs tutorial. Uh, we're not going to go over this entire thing. You can read it at your leisure um, and um, do exactly what you need to do as far as learning more about Emacs. Let's do some really simple commands. Um, so we already know using up and down to uh, go through text, left and right. Um, you can type in almost any, any single buffer. You can probably type in the tutorial. If you just start typing hello world. OK, so cool. Um, this works the way I expect. If you've used a lot of applications like Safari or Chrome, Xcode, um, Shell, Bash, you probably know a lot of key bindings that already work in Emacs. Uh, that's because they all use the exact same library for key bindings. It's called Readline, um, and it's just really nice. So you might know um, from editing URLs in Chrome or uh, Safari that you can hit Control A and Control E to quickly go to the beginning and ending of a line. Um, and you might know from Bash that you can hit Control K to kill all of the text in front of your cursor. So that's nice. So we can edit text, we can move around text. You can move up and down by paragraph by hitting control and using the arrow keys. And so here I'm just flying around to this code, and I'm going to just show you that really quickly. Um, let's say that you're right here at the bottom of the buffer, and you want to center the text. You can do that with control L. OK. Um, so far, that's pretty nice. Uh, let's just ignore the entire tutorial because it's extremely boring. Um, but incredibly useful. Um, most of the time when I'm writing code, I'm moving between files, I'm writing text, searching for text, and so the first thing we need to know how to do is to edit text. So let's um, open up a new file. I'm going to hit Control X, Control F, and I'm just going to um, change my path here to Emacs Tutorial.rb. Uh, if you write any Ruby, you'll know this is going to be a Ruby file. Um, it doesn't matter if you don't know Ruby, I'm just going to use it as an example um, because that's what I use. So here I'm um, already in Ruby mode. Uh, Emacs knows that a .rd file is a Ruby file. Um, we won't talk much about modes, but we'll talk about them later. Um, but what you see immediately is that as I start typing uh, class and then my class name, that it already starts um, highlighting the syntax. And if I hit a new line, and start typing a method and hit enter again, it highlights that and it puts the um, cursor at the right place um, for my tabs. Um, you can see the default is uh, two spaces for a tab, so that's kind of nice. So let's just do something silly like puts hello world, uh, and I'm going to end and hit tab, and end again, hit tab, and it automatically um, does the right thing. So maybe I just inherited some code from someone else, and the tabs are all screwed up, and there's spaces everywhere. It's really ugly, and who would ever write code like this? I'm just going to take that and uh, hold shift and press down to select it, and I'm going to hit tab. Oh, OK, awesome. So Emacs knows how to um, indent things that are already screwed up. That's great. So let's do that again. Let's put the cursor at that line, hold shift, and hit down a few times. And I'm just going to hit um, meta w. OK. And if I hit control y, I can paste. So, OK, cool. So, copy and paste. You can also cut um, with control w. OK. 
and you can undo with control forward slash. Okay, so uh, let's uh, make this example a little bit better. Let's uh, instantiate this class and call that method. Okay, so um, you can see I just saved this file. I hit control X, control S um, to save the file. So now it actually exists um, on my system. You can see it tab completes and it's the only file with that name. I want to do something with this, so let's talk a little bit about buffers. Um, because frequently when you're editing text, you'll have a lot of buffers open. Um, you might want to see two different files side by side. Um, so let's talk about that. This is one buffer, um, and I can up a, a vertical split with Control X3, um, and I can sort of move between those two with Control X O and Control X O. It's kind of like a, a ring. If you go past the end, you go back to the beginning. Um, so with Control X3, you can do a vertical split. With Control X2, you can make a horizontal split, and you can mix and match these. So I'm going to make another vertical split, and a horizontal split, and then I'm going to make another vertical split here. This is terrible. I don't recommend you doing this. Um, just showing you how you can hit Control X2 and Control X3 to split your screen up um, if you need to. And you can close these with Control X0 um, just to you know, give yourself some more space. And uh, if you have one buffer you want to see that, you can just hit Control X1. Okay, great. So let's actually use that to do something useful. I'm going to hit Control X plus 3, and I'm going to switch to the other buffer with Control X O, and I'm going to use an Emacs function. Uh, we haven't talked about these yet. Uh, we'll talk about them later. For now, um, just follow along. I'm going to hit Meta X and type in Shell. This is an Emacs function that um, starts a, um, a shell. And so um, I echo my shell. I'm using ZSH. You're probably using Bash or, or some other shell. It doesn't really matter. We're not going to do anything complicated with shell today. Um, so all I want to do is run the uh, Ruby Emacs tutorial thing. And let's say I actually just start typing uh, Ruby Emacs under and hit tab. Well, it doesn't tab complete. That's unfortunate. I hoped that it would, but it seems this uh, shell is not very smart. Okay, and so it, it works the way I expect. That's nice. Okay, so let's go back to our code. And um, for example, we might have a lot of code in this file. Let's just make a few copies of what we wrote. I'm going to go back up with... Um, yeah, we haven't talked about that yet. So you can go to the beginning of a file. Let's say this is very long. You have, what, 150 lines of code? You can go up to the beginning with uh, Control Home and down to the bottom with Control End. Okay, so you're not going up by paragraphs with Control plus the arrow keys. Um, you can do that. Um, but now we have a lot of text. I'm going to kill this, this white space with Control K. Okay, so. We have a lot of text, and maybe I'm trying to find something that matches some strings. I might search with Control S for puts, and you can see I can hit Control S uh, multiple times to search forward. Okay. Uh, you can also search backwards with Control R. So here I'm searching backwards for def space. Okay, so multiple times it works. If I go back to the beginning, it wraps around, um, which is kind of hard to see. Maybe if I make a comment like, this is the beginning of the file, and I go down here and search backwards for def. You can see, failing search backwards, if I do it again, okay, it drops back around to what is clearly the bottom. Okay, cool. Um, so we've talked a little bit about opening files uh, with Control X F. We've talked about splitting up your editor with Control X 1, 2, and 3. We've talked about switching between buffers with uh, Control O. Uh, we talked about searching forward and back. Um, let's talk a little bit about searching a bit more. Um, I might have a big project that has a lot of files, um, and maybe I'm looking for something that has a string out I know is in that file. Um, we're going to run the Emacs function with meta x and type in find dash g. I'm going to hit tab. Tab will tap and this. There's only one function that matches find g something. It's find grep. Um, you can see what it's going to run. It's a shell command. It uses find um, and it uses grep to uh, grep on the file contents, um, which is nice that it tells you what it does. Um, so we're just going to search for uh, the string hello world within this directory. 
Uh, should find a few things. It's found some Emacs backup files, some man pages. Okay, so that's how um, you can search for files within the directory you're at. Um, and we've talked about um, quite a few things, but if you ever get lost, um, don't despair. Uh, Emacs has a lot of facilities to help describe things you do. Um, you can get back to the tutorial anytime with Control H T. Um, and so here we are back in the tutorial again. I'm uh, just going to, let's see, well, I appear to be in some weird state. It says, please answer yes or no. You've changed the tutorial buffer. Revert it. Well, okay. I can either hit yes or no, um, but we're hearing a modal dialog, which we haven't talked about. So let's talk about that briefly. Um, maybe you're in a dialog that you don't want to be in. Just hit Control G, and that will quit. So I'm going to go back up to the top of this file, um, and I'm going to start opening a new file um, that I know is something that doesn't exist. And I'm trying to tap complete, it doesn't tap complete, so I want to get out of here. You just say Control G. Completely simple. Okay, so Control H T to get back to the tutorial, uh, Control G to exit out of the dialogs. Um, and a lot of the time you're going to be hitting keys. You might do something that did something you didn't expect. Um, and so if you want to know what a key binding is, you can ask Emacs, it'll tell you what all the keys do. Let's try that. Um, you can use Control H and then K to describe a key or click our menu item. So I'm just going to type in um, Control H K. What does Control H K do? And it opens up another buffer, a help buffer. Uh, it says Control H plus K runs the command describe key, which is defined in this file. Um, you can hit enter here or click that link, and you'll go directly to that Emacs code. It tells you what it's bound to, um, other functions that will call it, and it's just like a, a quick description of what it does. And you can use this for any key binding. Um, earlier we were using Control X O to switch back and forth between buffers. So maybe let's describe uh, key Control H K uh, Control X O. Okay, and that runs other window, uh, which is another uh, Lisp function. So cool. Um, so far we've seen editing text, uh, moving back and forth, searching, um, splitting your screen up, and really just the basics of uh, writing something with Emacs. So I hope in the future uh, we'll be able to talk about modes, uh, functions in Emacs, which we didn't even talk about very much at all, um, integration with um, version control like Git, um, possibly we could talk about IRC because I use Emacs as an IRC client. Uh, we could talk about Emacs this, we could talk about packages. Um, there's a Every lot day about we're in the Techendo channel on uh, Freenode. So come on down, ask questions about Emacs. I'll be there. Um, I'm Left Said Tim. You can also reach me on Twitter. I'm at Left Said Tim. Um, and let us know what you think and give us feedback. Thanks.